All right, everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit before we get to these handouts. You don't have to do anything on these handouts yet. I'll talk about them. But before we do anything here, I'm going to write a few notes up here. So if you've got some paper, you can write this down. Or I'm going to write this in my notes and then put it in the network folder so you can get a copy. But I'm just going to pull up a something to write notes on and I'll talk to you in some general terms and then we will get to work with WordPress but the, um, the first things I want to talk about are uh, some pros and cons about why we might want to use WordPress so here WordPress pros so positive aspects of WordPress, and then also negative aspects, so cons. One of the biggest pros, one of the biggest reasons why you may want to use WordPress is that it's free. Actually, I actually write mostly free. The biggest pro of WordPress is that it's mostly free. Uh, and we'll see why mostly as we go on. The software itself is free. If you wanted to make photo manipulations or advanced kind of graphics, what's the big famous photography software that you might have heard of? Photoshop. Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop, yes. So Photoshop, that's the big famous software. It's not free. Traditionally, it was hundreds of dollars to use. Uh, now they have a subscription which still adds up to hundreds of dollars, but Photoshop, for example, and a lot of other software is not free. It can easily be hundreds of dollars. It's not uncommon for some specialized software to be, you know, $2,000, $10,000 easily. But the great thing about WordPress is that it's free. And WordPress is an evolution of earlier software, such as Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is still around and popular, but WordPress is really the new kid on the block that's taken over a lot of jobs in web design. And one of the reasons is because it's free. A negative is that it can be complicated for beginners. There's a lot of screens to look at, a lot of buttons, a lot of panels and things to learn about WordPress. So it can be complicated. That's why we're taking the first month to learn basic WordPress before we get more complicated. WordPress, another good aspect of it is that it's highly customizable. If you get a site, for example, from Squarespace, they're very popular now also, or Wix, or Weebly, and so forth, um, they can have some very good-looking and functional websites, but perhaps they might not be as customizable as you'd like. Even though if they give you 1,000 templates, well, you and hundreds of thousands of other people have access to those same 1,000 templates. So how customizable can you really make your website in Squarespace, etc. WordPress can be highly customizable. Everyone can perhaps start with the same core design and make it completely customizable and different from everyone else. The negative of that, unfortunately, is that often requires code editing. Every website, every software is made out of code, computer code, computer languages, and so is WordPress. So if you have experience in some of the core web design languages, you also have a lot of experience in highly customizing WordPress. Uh, there's always going to be a way to customize your site so it looks like no one else's, but that often requires that you edit code. Yes? Um, how about your CSS? Is there, like, maybe style sheets that are, like, how does WordPress work? I'm lumping that together. CSS, HTML, JavaScript, those are the main languages. They all come together in WordPress. So if you've got experience in any of those or more, you'll have a lot of uh, ability to customize your site. How many of you have any experience in HTML? A few people. Any experience in CSS? Okay, any experience in JavaScript? Any experience in PHP? Okay, so you need to hire him because he's got experience in all of them. Those four languages there are what a, an advanced WordPress site 
is made from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Make a note here if you'd like. You don't need to be experienced in any of these but if you know any of these, you'll be able to do things that other people can't. Because we'll see that WordPress is customizable, but to the degree that you are allowed to be customizable by the developer. If you know, however, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP, then you'll actually be able to customize your site more advanced than what the developer intended. So because it's highly customizable, you'll be able to change um, easily, change design and features. The built-in WordPress does not come with e-commerce features. That's known as a plugin, an add-on, extra software. So any WordPress site can become an e-commerce site relatively easily. Easily change design and features. However, the best features might not be free. The best e-commerce plugin, or the best slider plugin, or the best theme might not be free. WordPress really operates on the, th on the concept of freemium, which is free and premium. Premium. where they will give you something for free, very usable and useful, but then some of the extra more advanced stuff is a premium, uh, which you'll need to pay for with a variety of prices. $5, $20, $200. There's just so many different plugins and features and they can range from such different prices because they're all they come from different uh, different designers and such so um, if you go with WordPress you can keep more of your money you can keep more of what you're trying to sell. I'm trying to sell a product that's $100. And so if I try to sell it through one of these other companies, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, etc., they might take a portion uh, for themselves. For example, that 99 cent app that you buy on the App Store, the developer usually gets about 70 cents. Uh, the App Stores take about 30% of every sale of every app. You never know that, you just buy your 99 cent app. But the developer doesn't get all 99 cents, they get about 70, 79 cents. So that'll be similar then here in, in an e-commerce site with WordPress. You can keep more of your money because you're going to be in charge of it. You're going to be deciding what features and the cost of various things. Um, but the, the opposite of that is that the way I'll say it is uh, you often then will need to get your hands dirtier in that you'll need to roll up your sleeves and customize settings, edit code, troubleshoot things, get your own tech support to make sure things work. Because now it's the difference between simply being a silent partner in a company and being one of the people in the kitchen who's also a partner. You need to do more hands-on. One of the great things about WordPress is that it's decentralized. In that the WordPress software itself comes from a company, Automatic, the company Automatic. And they put out that software and it's free and you can use it on your website with any provider and add any plugins. And these plugins also oftentimes come from third-party developers. The company Automatic is not the one that's going to put out the e-commerce plugin or not going to put out the slider plugin or the chat feature plugin. They're going to put out the platform, WordPress, and let developers of the world put out software that goes on top of WordPress to give it more features. It's decentralized, also known as open source. 
basically that other people can contribute to WordPress, make it better, add more features. It's decentralized, and that's a very good thing. But one of the downsides, then, of WordPress is that it's decentralized. And that means now you're not dealing with one company for your tech support and such. You might be dealing with three or four. You want, you, perhaps you're dealing with the WordPress company itself to make sure that the software runs. But then you're dealing with the, the creator of your shopping cart plugin and the creator of your chat feature plugin and the creator of your um, you know, slideshow plugin. So it's good and bad that it's so open. As, as we can see here. Any questions on any of these? Usually what your investment will be. Investment costs. So WordPress. Zero. The WordPress software itself is free. Themes or de the design of your site. Those can range from zero to commonly sixty dollars to two thousand dollars just for the design. You can see a variety of styles from these huge range of costs and even with the zero cost themes you can still do a lot of great things. Theme. Yeah, the, the price with just, a just the theme, and that's that's a common that's a common price. Forty to sixty dollars is a common price. And then two thousand dollars is also for just the theme. Just the theme. Okay. Plugins, which are these extra features that are not built into WordPress. The theme is just the theme, how it looks, mm -hmm. and then the plugin is the uh, the shopping cart feature the chat feature, etc. And these are going to range really highly also, from zero to five dollars to two hundred dollars. This is a huge range right here. What's that? Are those annual fees or one-time fees? It's going to depend on the theme or the plugin, but usually they're one-time fees. Usually they're one time. It's not uncommon for there to be um, themes and plugins that are annually and such. So then we've got what else? Uh, we've got domain, the domain name. That's your that's your website name, your website address, victorsbakery.com, victorswebdesigns.net, victorsconsulting.org, all of those. Those are going to range also. Uh, they are there are domains and such that you can get for zero dollars. I don't recommend it. Did you hear about the, the the latest hack where names and credit cards were stolen? And they and it happened to be stolen by one of the biggest free web uh, web hosting companies. 000webhost.com. They've got millions of customers for free websites. They just got hacked. And so uh, this is another aspect, another reason why to ask, are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? Because worst case scenario, you're going to be targeted uh, to get hacked because you're keeping, you're dealing with people's information, possibly credit card information. That's worst case scenario. Um, not everyone is going to be a target because you're not as big as Amazon, you're not as big as Etsy, you're not as big as, as um, uh, eBay and such. But here on the cost of the domain name, I wouldn't bother with the, with the free ones. They don't really give you the same sort of services. Usually you're going to be dealing with paid domain providers and these I can I've seen them uh, you know two two dollars and ninety nine cents per year to more commonly around thirteen dollars per year. And this is usually not an option, but there's also the premium domain names such as victor.com. Domain names are limited, they're finite. If I have a company that my family has had for 20 years, Victor's Bakery, and I want to now create a website in the year 2015, 
after 25 years of the web, my name might have been taken like 10 years ago, Victor's Bakery. So some of these names are going to be premium names where there easily can be um, $2,000 as well. $2,000 $2, just for the domain name. $500, $2,000, $7,000. I've seen domain names for $14,000, just the name, because the name is so desirable. But this is also going to be a big range. You can even get domain names oftentimes for free if you buy the next one, which is hosting space. The domain name is the name of your website. The hosting space is where you upload everything. Your graphics, your text, your videos, your products, everything. That's the hosting. You need both. You need a domain name for someone to type and visit, and you need the hosting to show your pictures and your slideshows and your text. And that one also ranges in price a lot. I've seen it um, from about three dollars per month to fifty dollars per month. The more you pay for something like hosting, the more features you get. Just like when you go out and buy a brand new computer. Here's one for four hundred dollars. Well, for two hundred dollars, it's got a better monitor. For two hundred more, it's got more RAM. And for two hundred more, it's got more hard drive. Well, then you end up paying a thousand dollars instead of four hundred dollars, but you get a better computer. Same thing here with hosting. You're going to be paying for your hard drive space, for your RAM, and the speed of the server, and all of that technical stuff. So the three dollar a month one will probably be good for most people, but as you get Amazon level, three dollars is not going to cut it, because you're going to have a lot of traffic, you're going to need to deal with bandwidth considerations, server size space, all of that. And so then the biggest investment might be then time. Time is money. So if I could draw the little infinity symbol here, you know, infinite. It never ends. What more can you do to improve your site? Oops, something's broken. Gotta fix that. New products, adding blogs, social media. That could be a big investment of your time and effort. And um, in, in, if you're starting off as an e-commerce merchant, you're going to have to invest in these in a variety of tiers. And I can't tell you how much it's going to be for yourself, uh, but this is a huge range, isn't it? And so what we'll be doing in this class is we will be setting up a WordPress site, but I'm not going to ask you, let's buy a domain name, let's buy hosting, let's buy a theme. I'm not going to ask you to pay for anything. This is going to be 99% free stuff. And therefore, because one of the most important things we need to purchase, domain hosting and space, because I'm not asking you to do it, I'm not requiring you, I can't ask you to do that in these classes because they're free classes. We're going to be using, so in this class, we'll be using a virtual host. We will have a virtual website, meaning it will not be out in the real world. We will not be able to type victorswebdesign.com and people can see it. We're going to be creating your, web, your, your WordPress website virtually, meaning it will only exist and it will only be accessible on this computer. So if you want to work on your site, you have to work on it on this computer. You will be able to save your work and take it home and work on it at home, yes, and bring it back with you next week and keep working. But what I'm saying is it will not be a real website out there that anyone can access. It'll be a virtual website. But it'll be fully functional. It'll have every aspect of WordPress, all the plugins, all the themes, everything. It's just that no one will be able to access it online. And a term that we'll use over and over and over more than local more than virtual host is local host. That's a term we'll use many times, so we should start to memorize it. What it what it means is your virtual your virtual WordPress site, local host.
So in this room, because it's a public lab, and we have 30 people here, and tomorrow we'll have another 30, and then the next day another, we have a lot of people coming in through these labs. So the college, throughout the campus, has a software called Deep Freeze. If you look on the bottom right corner of your, of your computer, you're going to see a little polar bear staring at you. That icon right there, that's a polar bear. Polar bear. That's Deep Freeze. What that is, is it, our computer, your computer, is frozen. When you turned it on, it checked the configuration, and then it started up. And then you're using the computer, you downloaded my file, maybe you write some notes and save it to your desktop, you make changes to our computer. As soon as you turn off our computer, everything you've done on our computer gets erased. It goes back to the factory settings of the start of the day, back to the frozen state. That's good and bad. It's bad for you because if you saved your work on our desktop and never took it with you on a flash drive, you lost it. When you come back next time to that computer, it's not going to be there. Anywhere that you save it on our computer, it'll be gone. Our computer's frozen. What's good about that in a public lab is that what if someone accidentally gets a virus on that computer? All we need to do is restart the computer, virus is gone. What if someone defaces the background right here? Just restart the computer, back to normal. So it's good for a public lab in that many people use a computer, but it's bad for you because if you didn't take your work with you, you're going to have to start over next time, perhaps. But I'll remind us at the end of the day to save our work. What we're going to do today is not going to be so mission critical that you have to take it with you. But I'm letting you know, week two and three and next month, you want to save your work and take it with you. You want to come with a USB drive. You're not going to be able to email it to yourself. You're not going to be able to email your whole site to yourself. So you want to bring a USB, uh, one of these thumb drives, flash drives, whatever you want to call them and save your work. Yes. Any size will matter, one gigabyte. They don't even sell them that small anymore, but one gigabyte will be fine. Because our sites will probably be about 50 megabytes, really small. So this is eight gigabytes. This will hold like a hundred of a uh, hundred copies of my site. Uh, so you don't need anything fancy, one gigabyte. Yes. Sure. Yeah, you can do that. I would still recommend, though, that you work on our virtual site because, uh, you, as you know, your WordPress site that's on, online out in the cloud is live. So if you make a change to your home page, it's live. And as we're working and adding stuff and changing things and making mistakes, that will be live. So if we've got this virtual host, we will be able to work with a copy of your live site on our virtual site, make any changes, break it, improve it, and it won't affect your real live site. Yeah, you can then transfer. By the end of the course, we'll have a fully functional site that if you would like to upload for real, we'll be able to do that. So it's very robust what we'll be doing. If, so running this virtual host is great because it's a test site, it is not live, therefore people won't see it. Excellent way to learn WordPress. But the problem is it's a bit technical to set up and to manage. That's why I've got those handouts. Those handouts are step by step everything we're going to do. So when I'm showing something here and you missed something, I'll probably say, look at step seven. It's right there. I'm also recording everything. So when you go home, didn't stick. Watch the video again. Do it at home. And so this virtual host software is called WAMP, if you're on Windows. And it's MAMP, if you're on the Mac. What we'll be doing in this 
room, it will be using WAMP because we've got Windows computers. We're going to set up our WordPress. It'll be virtual. No one can access it except yourself. It'll be using the WAMP software. You're welcome to do any of the things that we learn here at home on your own home computer. Or if you've got your own .com already, you can do these things as well. If you're on a Mac at home, you're going to be using MAMP. And my instructions for Windows and Mac are in that folder. That's why you want to take a copy. You're welcome to bring your own computer as well and work on your own. Because every time we come in here, remember, we, we have a brand new computer, so to speak. So if you bring in your own Mac, or Windows computer. I've got space on the edge right here for you to take a space and plug in and everything and you can work on your own system. That's fine. Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna put these notes in the network folder. I'll remind you where that is a little bit later. But if you remember, in the network folder, what I just wrote, I'm putting it into there. It's called Notes with today's date. What I want to do then is talk about setting ourselves up to work with WordPress. You have either the printed copy of the handouts or the one on your desktop. There's a few that were printed out that never claimed an owner. Let's see a few over here if you want them. But um, you want to open instruction number one. Double click on number one. The printer's off, so don't try to print just yet, please. And all of these steps here, I've tested them. I just looked at them this morning to make sure they're current because this technology always changes. But we want to look at step number one. Notice they're numbered. Campus e-commerce one, two, three, four. Set up WAMP server set up WordPress, basic WordPress, archiving WordPress. And then there's the Mac version, if you want the Mac instructions, with just number one and number two. Slightly different on the Mac. Just open up number one, set up WAMP server. You would need any help opening that up or your printout. All of these instructions here, you do not need to do these in this room. In this room, WAMP server is already set up. The software is ready to go. If you'd like to do any of what we're going to learn at home, you need to follow these steps. You need to visit WAMPserver.com, switch to English, download the software, install it, choose the defaults, and ready. You've got WAMP server, a virtual server. A server is where you upload your website. So we'll have a virtual one on our computers. Sometimes problems arise, so there's a few troubleshooting steps here that might help you. It should work. I've taught this class for a few years now with a variety of computers. Um, it works. It's just that sometimes there's a snag here and there, and I think I've covered all the eventualities. If not, send me an email when you're trying to do it at home, maybe a screenshot, try to figure it out, but it should work. This is all already set up on our computer, so what we need to do make a note somewhere. When we come to our, when we come in here every day, on your desktop, you're going to see a purple W. WAMP server. Go ahead and double click your purple W on your desktop, the WAMP server. Double click it. You're not going to see a pop-up that tells you, welcome to WAMP server. You're not going to get any feedback. So if you don't see anything, don't, don't click and click and click. Just double click it one time. What you should see in the corner, right here, a little W. First it's going to be red, and then it's going to be yellow, I think, and then green. Does everyone now see a little green W in the corner? Right there in the corner. That's showing that WAMP server is running. Uh, it's going to say, if you put your mouse on it, it might say WAMP server server offline. That's normal. We want the green W. Click on it, just click on it once. You get a pop-up WAMP server menu item here. And at the very top, you get localhost. Click on localhost. That's going to open up the default web browser. I think it should then automatically for everyone. Open the default web browser. It might take a moment the first time. 
And then it should go, <coughs> it should go to a screen that says WAMP server on the top left. Yes. So this, uh, did everyone get this screen, WAMP server on the top left? All right, so if this worked, you get WAMP server at the top left. This is the closest thing to tell you, yes, you've got WAMP server running. You don't get a pop-up that says, welcome to WAMP server. You only get this screen when, on your web browser, you go to localhost. Notice the address. This is not localhost.com. This is localhost. It's on your computer. Technically, this is http colon slash slash localhost, which is in my notes. So one way to get back to the screen is to click on the little green W at the corner and select localhost, or you can always simply open your favorite web browser and then type http colon slash slash localhost. There's no .com there. That's what my notes are saying right here. That's an either or. What's that? That's an either or. Click on the W or go to the... Yes. So whenever I say, let's go to localhost, that's going to be my shorthand to either click on the W and click localhost, or open your favorite web browser and type http colon slash slash localhost. That's one of the things we're going to get used to. Because again, we need to know some of this technical stuff to work with a virtual WordPress site. Once we've got this set up, then we'll be running in WordPress. But we need to, we need to install WordPress. And as I said, I would love it that everyone comes in here, they've already got victor.com, and it's all set up. But I can't ask you to, to purchase anything, so we have to do it the free way. And the free way is a little technical, but it's all in my instructions. So we're, everyone sees the WAMP server icon here. That's basically what instruction one is saying. At home, download the software, run WAMP server, and go to the website http colon slash slash localhost. Everyone's got it. So we'll close instruction number one. That one's done. Any questions on instruction number one? Let's look at some instructions number two. Either your printout or the PDF. Let's look at number two, set up WordPress. Notice I have them numbered at the top left also. Set up WordPress, setting up WordPress. Again, part of this is already done. The part that's already done is this. Go to WordPress.org and download the software. Let me take a quick digression here. You don't have to do this, but I'll show you this. WordPress.org and WordPress.com. <coughs> They're different. WordPress.org, WordPress.com. When this loads up, WordPress.org is where you download the software, is where you read the manual, is where you ask for help. It's the technical side of things. Here it is. Here's where I would download the software. Here's where I would read how to install it. Here's how I, where I would take the survey where I would go get support. Under support, there's the forums and the documentation. So WordPress.org basically is the manual. How does WordPress work? And where do I get help? It's right here. WordPress.com is related, but it's different. This is where you can go and create a website right now in WordPress for free. I can go through this process at WordPress.com and get a website right now. 
and it looks really nice and functional. But this is training wheels. This is not going to give you the ability to do e-commerce. So it's a dead end for us. It's not useful at all for us to go to WordPress.com and create a free account because we will not be able to add plugins. And one of the plugins we need is e-commerce plugin. So this will not work for us at all. But if you want to get your feet wet with WordPress and play around and get a free website address, you can go here. Another downside is you will have a website that looks like this, victor.wordpress.com instead of victor.com. So if you go to wordpress.com, you can get a free website, you have to settle for their name, and no plugins, which is a big downside, especially for this class. They will sell you a version that is victor.com only, and they will sell you a version that is um, e-commerce ready, but don't bother. Those prices are too uh, too inflated. I'm going to talk about other companies where you should buy your .com name and your hosting later. But uh, I believe it's $300 per year to get the full features of WordPress.com, and it's still not worth it. For $300, you can pay for three years of service at another company. So that's the big difference. People always ask, what's the difference between WordPress.com and .org? .com, get a free domain, but it's limited. .org, all you get here is the software, the help, and the manual. You don't install or use a site here. So therefore, my instructions here, at home, you would go to WordPress.org, you would click to download the latest version, 4.3.1, and it would download a zip file, which is a compressed file, because WordPress is made up of many little files. It's all compressed into one. You need to extract it. Again, this is basic computer stuff. You need to extract it, and then what you'll do is you'll get the software ready to use. So we'll pick it up from here, actually. Um, e. One E. We've assumed that we've downloaded the software, we've extracted it, it's waiting for us to use on our computer. We're going to start with E. Open computer. So on your desktop, let's go ahead and open computer. And it says open C drive, so local disk C as in cat. Double click local disk C. And notice we've got two things. My instructions say we've got a WAMP folder and before that, we've got a WordPress folder. We've already got the WordPress software downloaded to these computers. So once we get to this point, and I'm saying we're, we're going to move or copy the WordPress folder into the www folder in WAMP folder. So right-click your WordPress folder. You should see a WordPress folder. Right-click it to copy. Right click copy. And then double click WAMP folder. That's where the WAMP software is installed. Double click WAMP. My instructions, my instructions say okay, inside of WAMP we will see a www folder. Double click www folder. And my instructions say move or copy the WordPress folder. So right click an empty right click an empty spot inside the www folder and paste. It's gonna copy about 1,300 items, code, graphics, etc. That's WordPress, 17 megabytes, 18 megabytes. Now to confirm, everyone should have a WordPress folder in the www folder in the WAMP folder. You should see WordPress, fav icon, index, test. There you have it. So we want to make sure we copy that because that's our software. That's what we can use to run WordPress with.
All right, so what my instructions say then, okay, we copied the software. WordPress is modern web design software in that it needs to be attached to a database. A database is just a collection of information. Uh, in a sense, this is a database because it has your name, your ID number, uh, your access code, you, you are a record right here. So this is a database, in a sense. Uh, a computer database is much more complex because it can store name information, product information, uh, price information, picture information, all of that. So WordPress needs to be installed, it needs to be attached to a database. Because the database will store the information of your users, it will store the information of your products, even basic things such as the name of the administrator, your email as an administrator, the name of your theme, how many plugins you have, how many products you have. So everything that your site is lives in that database. Instruction number two of sheet number two, we need to set up a database. It's not complicated at all. We need to set up a database as per my instructions. So it says, go to this address, which means on your web browser, on your web browser, let's go to http colon slash slash localhost slash php my admin. It's like what my instructions say. Go ahead and type that, press enter. HTTP slash slash localhost slash PHP my admin. Type that. That should take you to a big scary looking screen about managing databases. On the left, it shows me my current databases and a bunch of other information. And then my instructions say, okay, go to that address. Um, you may get a pop-up about a password. If it asks you for a password, it's right here in bold. At the top nav bar, click on databases. Okay, so at the top we've got a nav bar here, databases. Go ahead and click that. That should show you the same information on the bottom here as on the left. These are the five, uh, these are the four built-in databases so far, same as on the left. My instructions then say at the top here it says create a database. What's the database name? We can choose any name we want for the database. It doesn't have to be the name of your site. It could be anything. It could be kitty cat and it'll work. We'll call this WordPress. Lowercase, no spaces, because case sensitivity does matter. Spaces do matter with when it comes to computer files. So we'll keep it very short and simple like my instructions. Just call it WordPress. <clears throat> Let's see, at the top nav bar, click Databases. In the Create box, name it WordPress, click Create. All right, there's a button here that says Create. Click it once. You get a yellow pop up that says the database WordPress has been created. You should then now see on the left side, you've got your WordPress database ready, and here too, five databases. Did everyone get that database created? Anyone need a little help? Now we're we're not going to need to do this often and again. This this is unfortunate. We need to do this, but we need to do this because not everyone's got a website for us to work on. That's okay.
All right, so if you managed to create this WordPress database, great, pat yourself on the back because now you're a, Word, now you're a database administrator. Um, so then, let's see, next instruction. Um, okay, so we've got the WordPress software in the right folder, the www folder. We've got a database. Now we've got to link the two. We've got to install it. So instruction three, go to this address. So up on the top, you want to type http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. Enter. What should appear there is the WordPress icon. If it doesn't, notice what we're doing. We've got in the www folder, we copied the WordPress folder. So that's a complete site. On our address, we're saying localhost slash WordPress. So we're accessing that site. Taking it one step further, if we had in this WW folder another folder called Site2, don't do this, but if we had a folder called Site2 in the WWW folder, we would have a brand new site. We would have a brand new site where we can go to localhost slash Site2. So we can have as many sites as we want here. We can have this testing site and another one that's more advanced and so forth as long as we've got them separated under different folders in the WW folder. <coughs> Question? Does the database work for both the sites? That's a good point. No, we would need a different database for every site. One database per site. So we have to go through that whole Yeah, we'd have to go through phmyadmin again and make another database called Site2 for example. So one database for one site. But we can have multiple sites and they just need to be separated by folders in the www folder. So did everyone get the WordPress welcome screen thing here? This screen now is about to set up our WordPress and it can be in many many languages. That's another great thing about WordPress because it's open source that means it can be in different languages. So you can set yourself up in English, uh, Dutch, uh, Italian, Japanese, Hebrew, Farsi, etc. So we're going to keep it probably on English and click continue. This says we're about to install WordPress. This is what we need here, a database name. We just created a database a moment ago. Check. We need a database username and password. Those are in my notes. So check. We need a, a, a host. Check. Because our host is localhost. And table prefix. Don't worry. So we've got all the information to set this up. Click Let's Go. So my instructions here. Click Create Config. Click Let's Go. Change username to root. Okay, so our database name. It's WordPress. We just created a database called WordPress, so we leave that as is. If you called yours WordPress with a capital P and a capital W, it has to be the same name. That's why I said no spaces, no capitals. So database name, WordPress. My instructions say the username will be root and the password will be empty. Delete the password completely. Don't even put a space. That's something. Put nothing there. Database host is localhost, and table prefix is wp, so that's fine. The only two things I changed were username and password, and it's in my instructions. Change username to root, lowercase, no quotation marks. Remove the password. Leave it blank. This is, to, this is for WordPress to access the database you created. This is not the same as my login information when I've got my site ready to go, ready to access. It'll make sense in a moment, but go ahead and click Submit. 
Hopefully you did not get an error here. If you got an error here, there's something wrong with WordPress connecting to your database. If you got an error here, just hold on a moment, I'll help you. But if you didn't get an error, let's click Run the Install. And then it'll say, Welcome to the fam famous 5-minute installation. Okay, information here. This is going to be a testing site that is not real. It's not going to be out on the real internet. Therefore, it can be anything. So I'm going to make up a site right now. You can do the same one or make it up whatever you like. I'm going to make up Victor's Bakery. That's going to be my online shop. I'm going to sell cupcakes online. So my, the name of my site will be Victor's Bakery. Not the .com name that's different, that's a domain. This is just the name of it in the design. Username and password here can be anything you want. This is going to be your login information to actually edit your site, add products, and so forth. The previous username and password was just for WordPress to connect to the database. We never really need to deal with that. This one is the one that you're going to deal with every time we come here. When we're going to log into your site, you're going to log in with your username and password. I have suggestions right here for the username. This is 3G. For username, admin. For password, password. These are terrible usernames and passwords. I wouldn't do this in the real world, but just to write something down here, that's what I have here. Capital P, actually, which does matter. So you can put whatever you want. Username admin, I'm going to put what my instructions say. Admin for the username, lowercase, and password, password, capital P. It's going to tell me a very weak password, but I don't care. This is a testing site. It's not real. Your email. If you forget your password, you can retrieve it. So if you put in an email here, that's for that. You can always change it later or just make it up. I could do this. Darth Vader at deathstar.mil. So you can put whatever you want on the email. Again, it's just a testing site. If this was a real WordPress site, you would want a real email address so that you can retrieve your password in case you lost it. Because it's testing, it's not going to do anything. Privacy. Again, because it's not a real site, it's not on the real internet, this option here does not matter. If it was a real site, I would leave this turned on, meaning I want the search engines. I want Yahoo and Google and Bing, etc., etc. I would want the search engines to find my site. Yes, because it's a testing site, it doesn't matter. If I sort of wanted to hide myself from the search engines, I could turn that off doesn't matter, but on my instructions I wrote uh, turn off. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to turn it off. When it becomes a real site, I need to turn that on. And of course I'll show you where to turn it back on when it's all set up. Click Install WordPress. What's happening is the, the software is now connecting with the database. That was the PHP my admin screen. So WordPress is connecting with the database, setting itself up. You should get a success. Again, if you have a problem here, just wait one moment. Success. Username admin, password, password. So log in. Click log in. Make a note at the top here. Localhost slash WordPress slash WP login dot PHP. This is one way to get back to the login of your website because we're going to have, as we'll see, a front end and a back end. The front end is what the regular user sees, your products and such, uh, your blog and such, and the back end is what you see as the administrator, how much you sold the inventory of your products, all of that. So only you should have access to the back end. That's an address. And it's in my notes how to get back to the back end. There's this address here on step 4b. 
And there's a slightly different version up here. But anyway, log in with your username and password, the one we just made 10 seconds ago, admin and password. If this worked, we get the dashboard. This is WordPress. If it worked, time for a break. If it didn't, call me over to get this working. Let's make sure we've all created our site and we're looking at the dashboard. We'll be back in 10 minutes, 2.45. If you miss something, call me over. We'll make sure you're on track. I'm going to turn the printer back on in case you want to print the rest of the instructions.